Hi, everybody. Hi, guys. How are you? We're just here at DCB Greenhouse, ready to do our live greenhouse tour. And then we'll also have our succulent cloning activity. Okay. Um, we're gonna give everyone a few seconds to join on. Hopefully we don't have anyone on yet. Give them a few minutes. Um, I'm April Nylander. I'm the farm manager here at Dakota College. Um, I run the greenhouse, keep all the plants alive, um, plant the vegetable gardens outside and do the flower landscaping on campus around here. And I'm Amy Kohler. I am the specialty crop technician and instructor, but I also am a horticulture instructor and a advisor for horticulture programs here at DCB. Uh, so I work with farmers farmers across the state that are vegetables and fruit farmers, and we do some reply research. Um, and I, my, my job, sadly, is more of an office job and classroom job. I get girls. to do the fun stuff. She gets to play in the dirt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we have people are live. All right, so we'll get started on our tour. Um, please just kind of bear with us. There'll be a couple times where April and I uh, switch off the phone depending on who's talking. Um, so hopefully no one gets seasick or motion sickness. <laughs> we'll try to be as smooth transition as possible, but this is our first time doing this. Um, but hey, Jamie, hey, hey, Holly, it's uh, good to see you guys. So we'll get started. So we'll just give a second. April's going to switch us around. <laughs> Are we good? Yeah, I think so. All right. Um, so just to let you guys know, if you have any questions throughout the tour or during our activity, um, we will be watching. So just kind of, we will answer as many as we can. Um, and please ask lots of questions. We always love to answer things and we will get to them when we see them on their, when they're posted. Uh, so we'll get started. So this is our greenhouse. Um, this is where the magic happens here at DCB. Uh, we provide, we do a lot of different things here at DCB. We have lots of different horticulture classes where we get to learn about succulents and foliage plants. And again, we're kind of gearing this towards you kids out there. Uh, so hopefully, we know you're all stuck at home, so we wanted to give you guys a little tour. And what April's doing right now is she's showing you guys all of our succulents. Um, a succulent, which we'll be working with later, is pretty much any plant that has some type of storage for water. So they're really good well to be adapted in desert situations. So you'll notice like some of these guys over here, they have really waxy leaves um, and they're really thick and kind of leathery and those leaves will, when there is moisture or water for them to get a hold of, they'll hold on to it into those leaves and then when things get more like a desert and dry and there's not much rainfall, they'll use all of that water in those leaves and they'll get really kind of wrinkled looking but they're still alive and that's what makes them a succulent and they come in lots of different shapes and forms. Some have really thick, fleshy leaves. Um, some have really big, thick chunks. It's not always just the leaves that help them hold on to that water. Uh, cactuses are kind of part of that. All, suc all cactuses are succulents, not all succulents are cactuses. Uh, so we have that different kinds of things here in the greenhouse. And we have a really neat collection here. We have our aloes and things like that. Uh, so yeah, so this is kind of our succulent area. And we'll be working with these guys later in our cloning activity. Oh, there's one blooming there. They oh, have yeah. the and prettiest these guys make flowers. Some pretty fun flowers. And little known fact, um, every, almost every fa plant family, you know, you've got like your sunflower family and you've got your rose family and things like that. Almost every family has at least one, if not more, succulents within that family. So it's not just one type of plant. There's different, all kinds of different plant types of plants have succulents. So really cool. And we'll just keep on moving. And I'll you want to switch off? Yep, and we'll switch off. Okay. April's going to talk about our foliage stuff and some of our jungle area. Okay. So in this table, we have what most people would consider house plants. Um, we do a lot of propagation on these and uh, use them for instructional purposes. Some interesting plants. These are from all over the world. We have our rolling bench in here. <laughs> Bear with me. So this tree here is pretty interesting. This is a mango tree. Uh, no mangoes yet. But if you follow me this way, we have something pretty neat. We have a coffee tree. This is how coffee beans are grown. Um, so these set fruit this summer. We've been waiting, waiting, waiting for these to turn to turn red. Once they're red, we can. Um, 
maybe brew half a cup of coffee and split it between all of us. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, we have a cocoa tree here and a nutmeg tree down right here. Um, so some pretty interesting things. Things you would definitely not see in North Dakota winters outdoors. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> or pretty much anywhere in this side of the hemisphere. So over here we have a collection of uh, lime trees. Um, and these, I bet no one knows what this is. Anyone want to guess? Can anyone type it? I don't see anything yet. And those who know, no cheating. <laughs> so uh, I'll show you what that grows into. Right here, we have a baby pineapple. Cool. Most people think pineapples grow on a tree, but they don't. They grow on this spiny bush. Um, these spines are really sharp. I've been poked in the eyeball by them more than <laughs> once. It's quite dangerous. <laughs> Tell them how those pineapple plants came oh, to be. Yeah, the cool little true. fact okay, about so pineapples. You can take any pineapple from the store, cut the top of it off. Um, let the flesh in the top part rot out a little bit, scoop that out, and then just plant it in the soil. And that plant will grow into your pineapple plant. Yep, pretty cool. Yeah. So, All of these plants were actually started by students here at DCB from pineapples they bought at Walmart. So, really neat. So, here we have a hibiscus in bloom. These flowers are huge, and they're my favorite. Stunning. Yeah. <laughs> this is one of my favorite parts we're going to go to next. It's a jungle. My favorite bush oh. we have here in the greenhouse. This Another is hibiscus. also a hibiscus. It's a double flowering variety. These beautiful salmon pink flowers. Neat thing about doubled flowers, they don't usually happen naturally in nature, but that we as uh, horticultural breeders and flower and plant breeders have bred um, different parts of the flower, like the sex organs, the ones that would usually make seeds, to actually instead of make like you know your your stamen and your pistils to actually grow or your uh, some other petals to actually grow extra f petals instead, just for beauty. That's yeah. like the only purpose. Let's show them these air plants. Right oh here. yeah. So these guys are pretty interesting. They are air plants. They don't actually have a root system or need soil to survive. So what you can do if you have these at home is just dunk them in water once or twice a week. Or spray bottle. Uh, or spray bottle. Here uh, we usually just spray them down with the hose, but they just live on this piece of wood here. Get everything they need from... See, the, no from, roots or soil. Yeah, these guys are absorbing habitat. all the moisture from the air. So they need a humid environment or sprayed down by a, by a water bottle. Enter the jungle here. Welcome this to is, the jungle. So this is a micro that we've created um, that direction is south so with our tropical trees here and the height of these benches we're able to create some shade and some more humidity in this area um, we have some birds of paradise up here none of them are currently blooming sadly yeah they are gorgeous when they bloom though they're worth the wait for sure this plant is pretty interesting so it doesn't have its pictures on it right now but this is a carnivorous plant and it will put on these uh, pitchers that hang down. And they're f they fill up with water and bugs will drown inside the pitchers. And the plant will use enzymes to digest the um, nutrition from the bug and feed itself. Pretty cool. Yeah. That's why plants can eat animals too, not just animals yeah. eating animals. We have some pothos, a staghorn fern. I love this thing. This is another air plant. Does not have a root system. It can be mounted right onto a wall. It's called a staghorn fern because it just it looks like antlers. Uh, I'm gonna tell you guys, it's actually really cool. She's we've created this little microclimate, so all the shade and all these green plants. As you walk in just this little niche, you can feel the temperature in the greenhouse go down probably by like five degrees. It's much cooler where I'm standing here versus out in the hallway right over there where we were just at. So it's kind of a neat system that we've little micro system or micro ecosystem. Have the iconic Dakota College banana tree. This thing is older than Amy and I combined, I think. <laughs> We're not telling you how old we are. <laughs> <laughs> but um, we, it wasn't looking so great a few months ago. Um, Janie and I dug all the soil out of here and replaced it. And that's a big work, guys. That's a huge a, container. A large amount of work, yeah, but it was worth it. So we were able to put a lot of organic material in here and some biochar, and we actually have a living compost system in here. 
um, with worms living in the banana trees. So we're able to put uh, waste material in here. The worms digest that and feed the uh, banana plant. So as you can see, it's looking pretty healthy. It hasn't uh, made any bananas for a few years, but I am confident that this year we <laughs> might get some bananas. Um, so right here, we have our koi ponds. I don't know if you can see them, they're a little shy. Oh, I see them. You see the koi? A few of the orange specks in there. And these guys were lovely, were very generously donated to the DCB greenhouse by Shelly and Jim Bull from Upham, North Dakota. So thank you to Shelly and Jim Bull for donating us their goldfish and koi. And the trough here was also a donation from some folks in Bismarck. I'm sorry, I can't remember their names off the top of my head, but we love this. So what we do with this water, it's alive. The fish are eating and pooping in here and, and it's full of nutrition and life. So what we do is once a week or every other week, I pump all this water out into another big uh, container and mix it with some natural organic fertilizers and we water all the plants in here once a week with that material. And so it's, it's, a, it's a, an ecosystem, it's a circle of life happening. Exactly. All right, so we'll keep on moving. Oh, and then I'll talk about the hydroponics. So I'll pass this on to April. Right. Now I get to front of the camera. Hey guys. So what you guys see here, it's just called an NFT system. I can't remember the top of my head what NFT stands for, but what we're using to grow these, this lettuce, you'll see the little baby lettuce and the adult lettuce here, is called hydroponics. And what hydroponics is, is growing plants without any soil. So we all know you'll have a plant and it's sitting in a pot or in the ground and then it has roots, right? And those roots take moisture and nutrients that it needs to grow out of that soil. Um, but if you don't have soil, these guys are just sitting in water. Um, so we have these little tubes and water's being pumped to these little tubes into the tray. And as that water flows down, the plants are taking up those nutrients out of the water. Well, since water naturally doesn't have nutrients like soil would, we have to add those nutrients or fertilizer to this water. And that's how hydroponics works, is you grow plants either directly or in, almost indirectly in water without any soil or media or anything like that. And you use the water and you add the nutrients to that water for the plants to grow big and strong. And we'll talk about, this kind of is connected to our another greenhouse we'll talk about later, which is aquaponics which is a different type of hydroponics than what you guys see here. And we'll talk about that in a few minutes, of what aquaponics is. It's kind of a really neat way of adding those nutrients to the water without using fertilizer. Okay, I, ju I have to interrupt. I just found another flower blooming. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so over here we have a plumeria blooming. Um, these are what they make uh, lei necklaces out of, in right, Hawaii. in Hawaii. And well. and perfumes and sometimes uh, f at fancy restaurants the plate will be decorated <laughs> okay we'll carry on here and i'll let you uh, talk about the seeds oh okay just real quick and we'll get into the green aquaponics so we have our uh, seed starting table here all kinds of things started we keep these domes over top um to just contain some some humidity in there um, so we don't have to water so frequently. You want to show them how tiny the seedlings are when these first start growing? Look, 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 right guys. in front of you there. Tell them what these seedlings are being grown so, for. Uh, these are flower seedlings. These are being grown for our campus. We will use these um, to beautify our campus. We also do some planters downtown on Main Street. Um, so if you guys see those, they're going to be purple and white this year, botno colors. Um, that's what these are being grown for. So we can go down this way. The next step, um, when they get too big for those trays, they start to need some fertilizer. So we like to transplant them into these, into these um, six pack cells. So this whole table started out like those seedlings and they were just transplanted last week and the week before that. Pretty cool. And behind us here, we have our, <laughs> dun, dun, dun. our CBD hemp plants. So these are clones. Um, we took cuttings of these. We just trim them off, strip some leaves off, and stick them in soil. They will grow roots and uh, grow into a whole new plant. So that's what these guys are. 
and um, CBD hemp is used for the oil. Um, once the plant flowers, we will harvest those buds and use those buds to uh, extract oil from that's used for medicinal purposes. And hopefully, yes, Janie, there will be a plant cell this year. Um, and if things are still kind of like they are as in the world right as they are right now, we will definitely have something set up like pickup or things like that. But some of those seedlings we just saw right now, we already just have planted just for the plant sale. So those in the local area of Botno, keep your ears and eyes open for, what we'll say, maybe early June? Uh, probably May. Oh, well, maybe yeah. May. May, yeah. we'll have the plant sales where you can come on down and purchase um, plants for your own garden that were grown here we in DCB will, as well. We will also have house plants and succulents for sale at that time too. And that money just goes back into our program here um, and helps the greenhouse be self-sustaining. Pretty fun. <laughs> well, thank you, Richard, for letting us know we're doing a great job. <laughs> uh, this table here is what we call our mother plant table. So these are all plants that we can take cuttings or clones off of and plant outside during the summer months. A lot of really fun begonias and geraniums and grasses. And my favorite, I know it's sometimes not called it's euphorbia, but I like to call it sparkle plants. Look at those little sparkles. Oh no, show them the good one. Oh, oh, we will. <laughs> this is our entryway. We have um, two different kinds of fig trees right here. Uh, no sign of figs yet, but we've recently repotted these guys and they have the nutrition that they need, so maybe we'll get some figs. Don't think ornamental figs get figs. I know. Like I'm it. sorry. I just had to let you know that. I'm pretty sure most ornamental figs don't actually get okay. figs. <laughs> so now we can go into. Um, you want me to film? Yeah. Okay. So we'll do a knock upon it. All right. Do you want? To, should we go in the hemp room real quick? Can you just show them a real quick. Okay. It's noisy in there, guys. So we're just gonna show you real quick in the hemp room. Oh, there's GK watering some hemp plants. Wait for the camera, GK. <laughs> So they're growing through a net system to just help keep them upright. Um, yep, that's about all there is in here right now. It's loud. So our last part of our tour is coming up, guys. This is the fun room. This is probably my second favorite spot in the greenhouse. What's it's your first good. favorite? Well, the, the fish area. The, the jungle? jungle area. Oh, okay. I love the jungle, but this area's got munchies. <laughs> Alright, so you're gonna have to come a little closer because I think you're not gonna be able to hear me. Alright, let me know you guys if you can't hear me over everything going on in here. Um had everything turned off, but she's not. Woo, it's hot in here. We it have we have all the fans turned off right now so you guys can hear us. And it is I would say 95 90 <laughs> degrees or 95 Most degrees in here. Off. Just to let you guys know, this is our aquaponics uh, greenhouse. And now we talked about hydroponics. Remember, hydroponics is growing plants in water um, without any soil, and you have to add the nutrients to the water so the plants can grow what they would usually get from their soil. Well, with aquaponics, you're taking aquaculture and hydroponics, and you're bringing them together. Aquaculture is growing fish, and we just talked about hydroculture, hydroponics, which is growing plants in water. So how this works, Instead of adding those fertilizer, you know, sometimes it's inorganic, it's made out of chemical form, it's kind of ucky looking. Instead of adding that to our water, we use something else to add our nutrients. And that something else is fish. So in these big blue tubs, we have tilapia, which is a very common edible fish. Most fish you buy at the grocery store is probably tilapia if it's not anything else. And then we feed these fish. And what happens when you feed an animal? It poops. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we take that fish poop water. Fish poop water or fish poop has lots of great nutrients that plants can use to grow big and strong. But there's one downside. When it comes out of the fish, it's in the form of something called ammonia, which plants really can't use. What they really need is your nit nitrogen, the nitrates versus nitrates and ammonia. So we take that fish poop water and we pump it into this big black tub with these little blue balls. And there is something growing on these little blue balls that um, we all have in our guts and that are all around us in the world, and that is bacteria. This is the good bacteria, not the stuff that will make you sick. Um, so the little blue balls, the bacteria are growing on, 
and that bacteria is then taking that fish poop in the water and breaking it down and eating it and making it into a form that the plants can use. So once that bacteria breaks down that fish poop water, we then pump it to our different growth systems. So we have a couple different growth systems here. The really cool one is over here. <laughs> is our wrapped system. And so this is lettuce. And it's literally growing directly in the water. These are roots. The roots are just hanging out, growing, and then we'll take this lettuce and we'll harvest it and we'll sell it to the public and then the food service here at DCB as well. So that's one type of system, a raft system. And the really cool thing is the plants are sitting in the water, the water is getting filtered and cleaned by the plants, and then that water is again pumped back to our fish, and it's a whole nice complete system. Aquaponics uses a third of the water traditional agriculture uses, so it's a very sustainable way to grow fruits and vegetables. And this can be done in basements, in big cities, anywhere. Very, yes, very small scale. You can literally just have a fish tank on your countertop with some plants growing on top, all the way to large scale where they have football sized buildings full of fish and greenhouses connected where they use that fish water for nutrients. Um, this is another type of growth system. This is our bucket system. So we have, these are our tomatoes. They're cherry tomatoes, and I'm going to tell you guys right now, nothing tastes better than a greenhouse grown tomato. <laughs> so good, you're missing out. But what we have here, instead of these roots just hanging out directly in the water, they're sitting in this substrate, it's like spun clay. They did not really give any nutrients, it's just kind of giving the root structure. And out of these little tubes is that is continually dripping that aquaponics or fish poop water. And that water drains down, the roots take what they need, nutrients and water, and the access strips into these little pipes, which then pump that water back to our fish. And you guys can follow the animal with the fish. Um, on the walls, we have a very similar system to what we had out um, in the greenhouse with the hydroponics. So on the top, the water's coming down and trickling. The plants are taking uh, they need from their roots, and again, the piping at the bottom is pumping that water back to the fish. Yep. Any so questions? right, right now that wall is full of herbs. A lot of the times, oh, we have some lettuce over here too. <laughs> if you want to show up top a little bit, we have peppers, yep. and, and we have beans, yeah. and we have uh, okra, right? Yeah. Oh, okra I think right we the yep, there's some well. okra. Yep. Lots of peppers up here. Uh, so we're excited about that. And then you guys, the best part, we're going to go see the fish. The fish are awesome. We're just going a little off school. Everything's pretty cool. Alright, so here are our fish. Neat thing about tilapia, the reason why it's so hot in this greenhouse is because these guys are tropical fish. If our temperature in our greenhouse gets below 65 or 70, these guys will start dying off. They really need nice warm temperatures. But these guys, these are the adults. They're about ready to be harvested. They're pretty big. We've got babies waiting to come take over their tank space. But remember, we they can see there's my, if you can see it, there's some food floating in there. The fish eat that food. They poop, circle of life, all that so good stuff. These are the mamas and the papas in this yep. tank. And now you're going to see the babies that were just born around, what, January? Uh, no, these are around Christmas, Christmas time, I think. Time. They're kind, kind of hard to see through the reflection here. There we go. Right, so there's, there's hundreds in here. There's probably, I would say, 300 or so tilapia yeah, they're, in here. They're, 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 they're cool. ready. Once we harvest the adults and have a fish fry, then we can split these guys up into two tanks and they can have a little more room. But they don't mind being crowded like this. They are social fish and, and are pretty happy living this way. And, and, and Jamie, I, I do know they're called bio balls. It's just more fun to say little blue balls. <laughs> okay. All right, we'll keep moving. It's another type of growth system. This is called ebb and flow. So the plants are sitting in here and this water is ebbing and flowing through these troughs and the fruits are taking up what they need. And again, it's being pumped back to the fish. We have these beans growing oh, in going here. Crazy. We are about ready to harvest some green beans. There we go. Fresh grown green beans, guys, these, in North Dakota. These bean plants, believe it or not, are only about a month and a half old. Yeah, in a traditional I have, garden outside, it'd take what? Two I months. have never seen beans grow this fast. They like an aquaponic system. Oh, Unfortunately, yeah. we found the slugs enjoy them. <laughs> but as we find slugs, 
we pick them up and throw them to the tilapia. So that's, that's good fun. And then these are the, our other babies. These guys are probably, I don't know if you guys can be able to see these. They're a little harder. Um, but they're probably no bigger than, what, half an inch, if that. Um, these guys were how old? Maybe three, uh, about a month? I think they're about a month old. About yeah. a month old. All right. So that's about the end of our tour, guys. Um, let me know real quick if there's anyone that has questions. We'll watch uh, what we're going to do before we go on to our succulent activity is give everyone a quick break. So we will come back on at 1.35. So we're going to take a 10 minute break to get everything set up. Um, we'll, we'll do a new live video, right? Uh, same place where you guys found this video. And if you have any questions, ask them now. You can ask them on this video or the next one. And we'll make sure it takes some time to answer them if, uh, if there's a delay or anything like that. So bye guys. We'll see you in 10 minutes.